Hello, welcome to my second tutorial video in my series of videos on the usage of IBM's by now ancient MVS 3.8 operating system as it as delivered by Jurgen Winkelmann's uh, TK4 distribution. Um, in the previous video we saw how to obtain, download, install TK4 uh, on your either Windows or Linux computer. Today we're going to look uh, at how to do stuff in MBS um, and uh, for that we will have to log in and so we'll start with logging in to um, MBS. I already launched my 3270 screen emul term terminal emulator and connected it to my uh, TK4 instance which uh, happens to be running in my home lab here um, or you may uh, typically want to run it on your own computer or laptop um, and then it will be a terminal connection to localhost and port 3270 so port 3270 is important don't forget that most people think don't specify a port and then terminal emulator is not able to connect so uh, assuming you already launched your terminal emulator connected successfully to your MBS instance inside TK4 um, you uh, log in I use Herc02 here in this case to log in and once we're logged in into uh, MBS we're presented with this with the top menu splash screen uh, we have some useful information such as date and time here the terminal um, this gives me a clue that I'm the only person connected at this moment to my MBS instance uh, because I'm terminal C0 and I, I know I'm user Herc02 always uh, good to know uh, you know the user you're logging into Herc01 is a super user is a, is allowed uh, everything and so it's a somewhat dangerous user to use for everyday uh, development or system programming uh, jobs um, I typically only use Herc01 when I really must Herc02 is also a privileged account um, and uh, but uh, you use whatever you want. So uh, let's assume you want to you want to uh, write a COPL program. Most of the viewers and users of MBS are um, COBOL programmers. They come to MBS mainly because they want to do some COBOL programming. And um, and so, how do you write a program in in MBS 3.8? And then how do you compile it and, and, and execute it. So as we saw in the previous uh, video, tutorial video, there's actually two the productivity environment or in development environments in, in TK4. One is called RFE and the other one is called RPF. I suggest you don't waste any time with RPF. It works, it's okay, but RFE is is very advanced and I would say in many many ways even better than IBM's very pricey ISPF uh, development and productivity environment so you go we go into one press one and uh, and this will be the top level menu for RFE you can either browse meaning that you can look at files without changing them or you can change them and then very important is utility 3 so uh, let's press 3 and go into that sub menu as you remember from my previous tutorial video F3 always backs you up function key 3 always backs you up one level and F8 function key 8 always takes you down uh, and function key 7 F7 always takes you up now uh, those are the three most important uh, function keys and they're used very very exp extensively in in any mainframe environment so in three within the utilities we have very important sub functions one is uh, work on libraries a library is like a directory in Linux or like a directory in uh, Windows a data set is like a file in Windows uh, or or Linux there's only one difference and that is there is a special kind of file or data set in MVS called a partition data set or PDS and a PDS itself is a file that can contain other files uh, inside 
uh, those files inside this file will be called members and most of the editing of source code is actually done inside members inside a partition data set so it, it's kind of like a subdirectory um, you can also put source code into a sequential file uh, nothing wrong with that that would be very similar to a file in Linux uh, but um, it, it's it's easier to organize things if you create your own PDS and her and TK4 comes with pre created um, partition data sets for every user and and so you have data set work what, what this will be the utility you would invoke when you want to create a new data set or partition data set of any kind of organization um, number three is when you want to copy members or data sets back and forth between volumes volumes are like disks and DS list is probably one of the functions you'll be using the most uh, for um, because that's how you look at your files, your stuff on your disks. So remember that um, um, MVS doesn't have a real file system in the sense of um, uh, Linux or, or Windows or anything is automated. Um, you kind of have to specify how big you want your files to be created. They will not be automatically extended. Uh, with some exceptions and um, and you have to say how they're organized how big are the records remember that this is a record oriented operating system not a byte or a stream oriented operating system such as Windows or Linux so you when you define a data set you have to tell MBS how big is the data set going to be and how many more extensions can be added and once those are filled up uh, it, you know, it will not allow you to add to it and also you have to tell MBS how how is that data set structured how many what kind of records uh, go in there how, what is the record length what is the blocking factor how many records go into a block which kind of depends a lot on the disk geometry so um, MBS doesn't have a real uh, file system we always remember that and but uh, uh, the sub function 4 is very useful because that's how you find your stuff so press 4 and let's say I want to find everything that I own Herc02 and here it shows me all my files all my um, all my data sets some of the data sets are partition data sets uh, such as this one Herc02 test ASM so I go in there and I have a little uh, PL1 program in here to calculate Ackerman functions. Um, always interesting uh, to do some math uh, with PL1. Um, and and here's another one where I have nothing in it. And there's a load library where usually you would put, put binary object files uh, members in it. Anyway, so uh, uh, remember 3.4 is the most useful utility out there to look at your stuff. I can also look at somebody else's uh, directories I will not necessarily be able to go in and change them now you will see that uh, when it shows me my data sets it also tells me where they are on which volume okay there's public 00, zero public 0, zero, 001 public 0 there's several public disks uh, as predefined in TK4 and MVS uses those and then uh, it shows us what is the organization so PO is a partitioned organized data set which means it's a P it's a partition data set sometimes IBM uses two different terms for the exact same thing so partition data set is how humans would call it in JCL or in MBS terms it's a partitioned organized data set and then it's fixed uh, blocked fixed block uh, records and and the record length is 80 bytes and the block size is 3200 uh, records per block. Um, remember that all the operations um, in MBS are block oriented so it will not, not unless you really force it to, it will not read one one record at a time, it will read the whole block at a time and then uh, present the record uh, when you need it. But this is a little bit uh, more advanced than we need to know right now. So let's see how would we um, uh, look at a COBOL source file, change it a little bit and then execute it. Now Jurgen the creator of TK4 has already um, included some example um, COBOL, PL1 and other languages uh, source files. Remember that TK4 comes with about 10 or 12 programming languages Pascal, PL360, Assembler, um, 3 or 4 Fortran compilers, 
Simula. There's many, many uh, languages. And I, tip, I am a PL1 and assembler programmer primarily. I know I know next to nothing about COBOL, but I know COBOL is a favorite, uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a language a lot of people will want to do stuff in. So there is a JCL library called Sys2 JCL lib. Um, Sys1, by the way, let's see it. what Sys1 is on TK4. There's going to be a few dozen Sys1 libraries. Those are all system libraries. It's kind of like in Windows, um, I think it's called uh, Win32, the Win32 directory. Uh, if you go and delete stuff there, you won't be able to boot your Windows anymore. And same thing here. If you change stuff here, you should know what you're doing. Uh, you may not be able to re-IPL. Uh, IPL means, is this, means booting in mainframe language. Uh, your system anymore. So be very careful what you do out here. Um, but that's why Jurgen has called uh, several of the other additions he's brought to MVS, and those are amazing additions. Uh, he's called them Sys2. So there is a library called Sys2 JCL Job Control Language Lib. And there, inside there, there's many, many examples of JCLs to accomplish things, such as adding users. Uh, changing passwords on data sets. There is a there is a security protection scheme within TK4 called the RACF, um, uh, resource access and control facility, but control is spelled with a K, R-A-K-F, because there is an IBM product called RACF with a C, where C stands for control. And so there's somebody created a downsized version of it to give some security so that users cannot delete each other's email and, and not do too much damage. But HERC-02 and HERC-01 are users on NTSO that are able to do everything. So we always remember that. So let's go and select the job, uh, COBOL job. Um, uh, Jurgen has taken um, a simple, well, not a simple, but a classic programming problem, which is creating prime numbers, and written this prime number uh, algorithms in several languages, uh, starting with Algo, Assembler, uh, three different COBOL versions with memory allocation, without memory allocation, then three different Fortran uh, compilers, um, and then the GCC um, C compiler, as you know, from Linux, which is also included here, and the excellent JCC C compiler, which is better than GCC in my eyes, as well as, of course, the classic PL1F compiler, which is an amazing compiler, um, Pascal, Simula, and several other languages. Now, remember that all the compilers that come with TK4 ha had to be illegally obtained. Compilers are very expensive if you if you want to run a, a modern compiler from for COBOL or PL1 from IBM, it's going to be very very expensive. Uh, but up to the late 60s, IBM had to release all the source code for uh, the compilers and MVS to the open because it was funded um, in part through uh, U.S. federal grants, which forced the code to be available to everyone, uh, which is a great thing. And thank you, U.S. government, for that. Um, and so the compilers that we have in TK4 are ancient compilers. These are all compilers from the mid-60s. And you will see in the printouts later, it says COBOL compiler 1966 or something like that. And But they still get the job done. And millions of lines of code that were written in those compilers still work today in banks, insurance, government, airlines, etc. So there's nothing wrong with those compilers. You don't need the latest compilers to write prime number generators. Uh, those compilers will do just fine. Just uh, remember they're uh, very old and typically some of the restrictions are you can only use uppercase, uh, etc. So let's go and take a COBOL job here. Now, uh, by pressing E next to the, to the member you want to look at, it opens up here in in the RFE editor, which is an amazingly good editor in my eyes, uh, very similar to the ISPF editor, if not better, as I have mentioned before. So you will see that we have a COBOL program here. Um, and scroll down, F7, we'll look at the whole uh, code here. As I said, I know almost nothing about COBOL. I think I can follow what's happening here. Now, um, how do you edit? Let's, let's you know, there's a lot of, um, introductory uh, remarks here which we probably don't need um, and you know but well, let's leave them in there but if you wanted to do changes you know here's where you would do your changes um, and um, 
and um, and then anytime you make changes remember to save and that will save the member with the changes um, scroll down scroll up now one thing that we can do here we're going to give it this is a batch program remember everything we do here is is not interactive that's except for TSO itself but when you execute the program uh, compile and then execute it it will run as a batch job so you have to supply it with an input parameter um, here I'm t asking it to produce a hundred thousand prime numbers I could also just make it 10,000 prime numbers um, or prime numbers up to 10,000 so um, and now how do we exit what ha what's happening in this job so first of all this is called the job card this could all be put in one line if it would fit but it doesn't so uh, it's been split into five or six lines and we have the user running this job plus a character that makes it easy for you what I typically do is when I I, I I send the compile job to be executed and then it comes back finds an error so how and then when I look at it in the queues in the spool queues how do I know which one is what so what I do is I keep increasing the last character here from C to D to E every time I execute it so I can keep them apart otherwise they'll look exactly the same um, so here let's call it A and remember everything is uppercase and then there's the name of the job this will come out in the printout and then the class execution class is A very important um, everything that you send out for execution is sent through a, a, a scheduling and spooling system called JS2 job entry subsystem 2 and JS2 needs to know do you want me as soon as it gets this job that we're looking at it will, it will want to know you want me to execute it immediately or put it aside and then you launch it later when when you want to launch it so class A in TK4 um, is defined as immediate execution and then very important uh, message class H head H stands in TK4 for held output so this tells just to as soon as it finished and produces all the output from the compiler from the execution from the link the linkage editor before the execution put everything into a queue and so we can go look at it in the queue and decide to print it later or to, to, to delete it or purge it or, or leave it there um, if you if you, there are several classes A is one particular printer message class A one message B is another printer and so I typically only want to print out at the very end when everything is perfect so let's put an H for held output and uh, remember to always look at this some people sometimes write to me and say I don't know I executed a job I don't know it, where it disappeared where it went well if you can't find it in the queues it's it probably went to the printer and since TK4 is typically not connected to a real printer though you could um, your output goes if it goes to the printer it really goes to a file it would have to the, have to go into the directory where uh, your uh, TK4 is running and inside there there's a print directory we looked at this in tutorial video one and inside there at the very bottom then you will see all the output produced by your job but uh, if we put an H it's going to be we don't have to deal with all that then you have a few comments here on what this does as well as then the uh, the, the exec execution card uh, called primes here which executes the COBOL compiler and um, execution procedure. There's a procedure defined that does all the hard, all the um, detail work in actually running the compiler and long, long running the linkage editor and then executing um, the the object file for us. And that's a procedure called COBOL uh, compile and go. Which, you know, I compile and immediately execute. And some parameters to the compiler. And then uh, down here we have um, the actual source code. So that's the whole job. Now, all we would need to do to run this, you know, to uh, compile this job and execute it is um, submit it. So we submit it with the command submit. You send it to Jess 2 through the MVS internal reader. Uh, remember that back in the days there was actually card readers and the way to run anything on a mainframe in, in the early 60s and 50s up to maybe the early 70s would be you had a stack of a, st a deck of cards with everything that you see on the screen here would be every line would be a card and then you would put it into the card reader press a button and it would read the cards and and send it to MVS 
Now, obviously, there's no more card readers today, or not even in, in the mid 70s anymore, and so there's an internal virtual card reader that MBS has, and submit sends this job to the MBS card reader, um, and then passes on to Jest2. So let's execute it with enter, submit, or you can just shorten it to sub, and always uh, take note of the job number. Here the job number is 59. So I I know that my job was already uh, scheduled for execution, and since this is I, I have a very fast machine, um, but you know any any uh, any computer of the last 10 years will be will be hundreds of times faster than a real computer from back in the 80s when I was a programmer, PL1 programmer on uh, on a real mainframe with a real 3270 monitor and keyboard. Um, so now, how do we look at the output from this job? Well, we back out. Remember, we're still in the sub-menu um, of RFE, which is the one that shows us what's on the disk. So, uh, but there is within, if you here, if you go from the top, remember, we are in one RFE, then three utilities, and, and there's a utility eight out list or output list. Display, delete, or print held job output. And since we specified our our job to be held, message class H, um, that's where we should be finding our output. And we just took notice of the fact that my job is called job 59. And sure enough, here it is, Herc02. I executed the job and um, and with S you select it. And so this is the Jest2 the job entry um, and <laughs> Jest2 scheduler and, and spooler uh, log. That's what it tells me what it did with this job. So it started class A, which is what we had specified. It tells me exactly when it received this job and then how long it took it to finish. So, so the whole job from compiling it and then finding the first 10,000, finding all prime numbers up to 10,000 took less than a second because the timer is still exactly the same. That's how fast computers are. Back in, in the days when I was running on a real IBM mainframe, it was a 3081 uh, computer with 16 megabytes of memory, 16 megabytes, and, and one CPU, and about 3,000 online users that were doing business on the terminals, and about 100 TSO programmers and the and the production environment and the test environment all on one machine and so when every time I was pressing enter my terminal I would have to wait at the very least a second up to sometimes two three seconds to get a response um, and if I submit a job of this complexity I'll probably wait about a minute or two for the computer to go through all this process it find the prime numbers and and produce the output obviously back then i would not be allowed i was in the military back then i would not be allowed to, to run a prime number generator on real hardware i would immediately be disciplined or or get in serious trouble for sure um, because those machines were ex they were always busy and very serious stuff was running on those machines but here we have the luxury to do whatever we want and that's the great thing about progress and that's the great thing about having MVS again just for ourselves. I would have never thought 35 years ago when I was working on a real IBM mainframe that one day I would have a whole environment just for myself. It would have been unthinkable. Anyway, so I digress, um, but let's look at the job output. So the first thing you always want to do is check the return code. RC stands for return code. Zero means no compilation. This is the co COBOL step which means the compiler step, found no errors, no warnings, um, so that's perfect. And then the go step, the execution, had no problems either. So this job went through perfectly, as it should. And we scroll down and look at all the outputs. This is the compilation job step, and uh, and here we have a little bit more information. Um, it took it it took it a, a f less than a fifth of a second to compile. That's just amazing. And then less than a tenth of a second to actually find all prime numbers up to 10,000. So that's how fast this thing is. Um, and that's emulated, right? I mean, this is this Hercules, uh, the, the emulator that's below, beneath TK4, has to emulate all those instructions. So there's about a 1 to 100 
relationship between a system 370 instruction and how many instructions it takes Hercules to emulate that instruction. So I found it's about 1 to 100 ratio. So um, and still it's it's so amazingly fast. It's just mind uh, mind bending to me. So as you can see here you have some hints how old uh, the software is. So the compiler is actually from May 1st 1972. <laughs> And uh, this here tells you how old the compiler is. Um, it still works fine. And we have down here the printout of all the prime numbers up to 10,000. Quick verification. 2 is a prime number. 3 is a prime number. 73 is a prime number. And all the rest I would have. I would need to write a COBOL program <laughs> to find out if they're true or not. But I, I know they're, uh, this program is correct. So. Uh, here found all the the last prime number up to 10,000 is 9973 so that worked perfectly now um, we could from here also um, schedule to print it we can still print it there is a, a help menu here um, and we can also you know we can also purge certain jobs uh, by putting a P or reschedule change to um to a oops um is it x a i think i would have to go look at the at the exact um re, you know command to change it to a to an output class so that it would actually go to the printers but um i'll check it out and put it in the notes below in the video so um uh this is this is how we uh, run um jobs in MBS 3.8 and um, any questions please uh, ask in the in the comments below um, and uh, any other comments are always welcome please uh, press the thumb up uh, to like my video if you like the video um, so that um, we have some feedback from you guys thank you very much and goodbye